Hello there everyone and welcome back to the Hearts of Iron 4 mod Ash. Um what's it called? Uh, Anakna Babe. Ba -ba -be. Ba -ba -be. Something like that. So I apologize for mispronouncing it. We gotta talk about Gorilla Base wiped out, as well as a couple comments. One of our search parties has successfully located and ob obliterated a major rebel base south of Manila near Waste Center territory. The fighting was intense, with many of our own perishing at the hands of the guerrillas. However, the destruction of the base, an important part of the rebel command structure, has been destroyed, paving the way for the reclamation of stability in the region. She was with them on the battlefield, as were burning rebel towns. Similar to the burning of weeds and brush to plow more farmlands. We must burn the refuge of these rats that infested our lands. We can only grow and prosper once these people have been burnt to ashes and cinders. We must leave no trace of them in this world, just like the empires of old. But from the time before the dark month, they must be incinerated from the face of the earth. Only the erect, uh, elect and people chosen by our mother will preserve or persevere and build from the ashes of the old world anew. Until now, there's been nothing new under the sun, nothing but ceaseless and meaningless work built by wise men just to be destroyed by the successors who are fools. We are the new re revelation that will spark the flame of our mother's holy retribution across the earth. Uh, this is just the beginning. Fires in the jungle. Her fires of her wrath. The fires of the wrath were not enough to break the hearts and minds of the rebels. They retreated into the jungles to fight a campaign of a coward's uh, warfare. Attacking spy wagons and raiding our towns at night. This will not be tolerated. We shall see it fire to the jungles of which they uh, seek shelter with them. The flames here. That will bring them pain of which they have never known. They will scream only for the flames to fill their open mouths. Only their charred remains will be left to rot and wither away in the great sleep of death. They will know that these lands belong to our Holy Mother. And then uh, no concern of ours. Pulak sent us a diplomatic letter asking us to stop convincing Christians of our goddess. We will we respond with a solution. Why should we stop? We are required to bring or to provide the people with this truth. We'll never stop bringing the word of our goddess to the world. They will do nothing to us at all. We will continue with the work for it is ordained by our Bathala, our most just and loving mother of the storm. We will never cease. They will either convert or live in filth and disparity, and in the end they will beg our goddess for forgiveness. A community of flames. General Fernando Cannon surveyed the town of Taugi Tagug from overlooking hills as a soldier swarm the streets, seeing a light any building that had not been yet reduced to a pile of cinders. The glow of the flames against the stormy sky created a blood chilling aura as if the evil god himself had descended onto the village and unleashed a samurai. Kennedy knew the burning of Tagug and other villages like it was necessary. They had been hubs of rebel activity, and the townspeople had harbored violent fugitives. He was simply performing Valentine's orders and an extension her will. These villages were a threat to the stability of her realm and in his rabid loyalty to the family he had fostered as Sodom and Gomorrah of his own creation, and yet, though he knew his actions were necessary, the crackling of the flames and the screams of his villagers still struck at something deep inside him. A piece of him had been touched that he had suppressed since the dark month. The prophet Bethal had always preached the necessity of setting alight the hearts of men to follow her guidance, but setting alight the world was something else entirely. Cannon felt dirty, but he knew the blood on his hands would cleanse the world of the e evil god's corruption. She wills it. Oh, we lose a lot of loyalty. Holy cow. But that's okay. We get enough. We have enough anyways. No concern of ours. Uh, 1.1 political power every single day. And we still need to continue past this area. Scavenging. Oh, eight things of artillery. Uh, Tanzanium. Why not? Mathematics. Thank you very much. And the explosive guns and powder. Um, how do I get to all of this stuff? Domestication of animals. I guess we have to go that way because we do want to get some of this. Yeah, that'd be really good. Actually, get workshops. And let's keep pacifying it. Very nice. Fires in the jungle. Very nice. Oh, one of the comments from uh, last video was I should warn you that logistics in the Philippines is god awful. And you need the attack for dockyards to alleviate your supply issues. But smoking out the rats. Yaneris clutched her baby to her breast. All around them, fires leapt up into the air, coiling around the trunks of trees and sending a firestorm of burning brush tumbling down from the sky. The dark smoke began to fill Yaneris' lungs. But she continued to run, holding onto her child as if her hands were clamped to steel. Behind her, she could hear her laughter, and even, or hear laughter, and even further back came the incessant beating of war drums. She turned and peered through the flames, catching a glimpse of the place that she just ran from only seconds earlier. Stormchild soldiers were moving into the area, carrying rifles, torches. Uh, one of them noticed a tree that he judged not to be sufficiently smoldering and set it ablaze. Yaneris had never seen such cruelty, but her horror was overshadowed by her astonishment. It was one thing for these cultists to march into her village and slaughter any who resisted, but now they were bringing refugee camps into the jungles? As if impoverished and destitute people fleeing her, uh, their burning homes were a threat to them? She had heard much talk from the storm child priest of an evil god, and now he would bring fire and death to the world if he was not stopped. But to Yaneris, their storm goddess was an evil god. How could this cult be claiming to defend the world while trying to burn it down? She tripped and her thoughts were broken. Her baby tumbled out of her arms, and then a heart a few feet in front of her with a thud. She clambered to her feet, but stopped at the clack of a rifle behind her. She froze into her vision and walked a soldier. He was grinning from ear to ear, not seeming to worry much about the infernal consuming the brush around him. He glanced at the child on the ground and then back at Yaneris. His smile grew wider and he pressed his barrel into the crying Babel's temple. Yaneris screamed, but she was not fast enough. A shout rang out over the roar of the flames. Only one? Even less loyalty. Hey, but more manpower. Okay. Conversion through service. Ooh. Classification goes up even higher. Well, we're already at 80%. We may not have to bring it up too high, but we'll see. 
that's a lot of resistance. Holy crap! Just because we don't have we didn't have a full garrison for a while, but we still get more compliance now, which is good. It's just taking a long, long, long time to get there. Keep training for now. It'll be fine. Hopefully. Um, envoy. I need to raid rebel supply depots. Supply depots. Yeah, why not? More infantry equipment, which. Also, I, I stopped making so much. War amongst the invaders. Tanzania is a product of the world's corruption. It's a Japanese devil's drug, and like frenzy sharks, they tear each other apart over scraps of it. This is great news for us, but do not be deluded. The swarm will reform in time. While they're divided, we have the opportunity to free West Luzon for the present and seal off the internal mines once for all. The time to strike is nigh. So I, I want to get as much metal armor as possible. I'll put down as much resistance as possible, so. Alright, cool. Recruits to the front. Plastication will increase by small amount. Another uh, comment was, The nation reminds me of the whole Russian Empire, to be quite frank. Um, whatever it's going to end in a similar fashon. Aside from that, it seems to be a rather interesting mod. Curious to see how this one develops. And if it's possible to play the other countries in Luzon. I think there's only two countries with focus groups currently. Um, arms sent up with the rebels. A recent expedition party in Balanga has uncovered a combo carrying arms from Bulag, bound for the Balangawi rebels near the southern coast. It's becoming clear to us that the Pulagi have begun to actively aid the rebellion in Balanga, greatly strengthening their fighting capabilities against us. Perfidious Pulagis. Yeah, I think only there's two nations with focus trees currently, but the darkest days. It was early morning, and the embers outside were the only thing lighting the room. Smoke filled the air, and as distant screams and gunshots rang in the distance. A prophet back then, from just a humble preacher, sat curled in the corner of a shack, a shotgun lay next to him, along with the marauder's fresh corpse. Yum yum. Why did you do this? Valentine voice trouble as he spoke to nobody in particular, a rosary in his shaking hand. We tried to help you, gave you food, and saw you repay us. His tone more than the sorrow than anger. And now you forced me to sin too. Papa, are you okay? A small dear voice broke out uh, um, out of his trance. Can I come out now? Valentine wiped the tears off his face, rushing to pick his daughter up. She was no so small back then, yes, Ophelia. Papa's okay, come on, we can't stay here. Who did the mirror who did the scary man come into our house, Papa? Ophelia asked as Valentine carried into the forest, the lights of the burning village growing more distant. Where are we going? To your mother, dear, Valentine lied. <clears throat> She said she'll meet us in the jungle. We'll make it this time. Well, I can save her. Well, but you couldn't save her, Papa. His daughter's voice grew de deeper. You never could. You have a higher calling now, do you not? We're talking about a sudden gust of wind nearly swept Valentine off his feet. The thick jungle parted as rain poured over him. To his horror, Valentine found Ophelia melting before his eyes. Streams of clear, glistening flood water draining down his hands where she once was. He tried to pull her back, clutch on anything saw, but it was all in vain. He stared up to the stormy cloud sky, an ethereal figure materializing in the eye of the storm above him. You are the chosen, Valentine, she demanded. Her voice could be booming like thunder. You must carry the truth. You alone must purify your ranks, purge the heretics and unclean. She points her long, twisted finger at the shriveling frame. You. Valentine gasped awake. Even now, the darn stories wouldn't leave him, or the storms wouldn't leave him. Even in his sleep, the gods would torment him. She wanted something again, but what? He had committed purges, rooted out any semblance of dissent, baptized the entirety of Balangan in blood and fire. What heretics? What cost possibly could be left? <clears throat> He looked out in the hallway, to the door of Philly's bedroom. The prophet's daughter, the last member of his bloodline, the only one who ever doubted to doubt him, to still question his word, cold sweat streamed down Valentine's forehead. He lay back, Ophelia, this little girl, his successor. This was insanity. He had to be wrong. He must have misinterpreted something. He must have. The nightmare would continue the next night and the next night after. Each sleepless morning, each scream, each horrid, horrid vision bringing Valentine closer to understanding. Unclean, unclean, unclean. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, we'll do a recruit to the front. Um, where are we at for this? 85% is actually really good. How many more do we get? By a small amount, so let's save our PP for now. Could really use more stability, but it's going down every week by because, uh, which is kind of weird because we get this one weekly loyalty gain or unity gain, but then we lose weekly loyal unity, so I don't understand. At least we get more army XP, that's good though. We got a lot of money though. 200 a month is pretty nice, I'm not gonna lie. Got my the season, of course. And now we're losing political power. But after that, Envoy to Anitu. Gets Envoy from the Storm Children. Study Balangawi designs. That'd be kind of nice. But we gotta wait. Still putting on more civvies. Scavenging. Two whole artillery pieces. Wow. Here's the combo traffic. We're seeing a much larger uh, number of Pulagawi. Uh, Pogali. Pulagi. Combo has been caught attempting to smuggle arms into Balangaw. It appears that the Pulag is increasing their supply of weapons of insurrection, hoping to circumvent their capture of their convoys. Our capture of their convoys with overwhelming quantity. Something must be done. Where are we at now? 80%? Ah, oh, we do one more time. Why not? Need more body armor? Man power. Dang it. My god, this is taking forever to do to pass by the area. Glory to the Prophets. Why not? Glorify the Prophets. Say Balangawi designs, might as well. 
Uh, so well says, uh, Hi, Mr. Booklover. As a long time fan and developer of Ash, I'm flattered that you've done a video on a mod. Keep up the great work. And to the mod developers who are watching, if they're watching, thank you. I appreciate you, um, you know, with the kind words and, um, you know, working on mods. I love it. It's awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. <clears throat> 80%. Yeah, I mean, there's no point to not do this. I don't see any point to save our money. Oh, oh we should invest it, but envoys return. The envoys, uh, envoys were sent across to uh, Balagi uh, territory to the realm of Alitu War as his return. Um, with good news. Divino Talastas has agreed to give sporadic aid to Rakaz of crushing the Balagawi ruffles in exchange for helping him weaken Polag after their blood has been crushed. The most generous offer. Promises are fickle, anyways. Cool. Glorify the prophets. His name is Zahn. Oh, by a large amount. Nice. Someone says, excited for this quick, though, it's. Baba and also Baba Baba e also Anak na Baba e means daughter. Um, so yes, and that was another comment as well from someone else. Baba e, yeah, Anak is really good. Just say a little faster. Anak, Anak. First, I need to convoy. The first convoy of supplies from the Anitu Wars is arriving in the capital. Several hundred tons of infantry equipment has been unloaded and handed out to the fresh recruits being raised across the provinces. And it's Anitu are generous people. Enemy, my enemy. Ananak na Baba means daughter. Is a little translation is. Child that is female. Someone says the guy in the thumbnail looks like the one dude from one of the Mad Max movies. And someone else says, put some uh, military police in your garrisons. Yeah, we could. Well, we could, but it just takes so long to, you know, get up to there. Um, move in loyalists. Oh, what are you doing? Nice. Um, yeah, I'd like to, but it just takes so long to research stuff right now. What's the uh, story behind this mod? Someone else asks. Uh, aliens came to Earth. They left their equipment behind, and all major nations got an upgrade. Kaiser Willem decided to fight the UK and France with alien weaponry, but actually destroyed most of Europe and caused a worldwide apocalypse. Volunteers! Rather unexpectedly, two contingents of Anita War Berserker volunteers have arrived in Manila, offering their help in the destruction of Pol Polagi convoys moving into Balaga, or Balanga to supply the rebels. Though they are not particularly high caliber training, this extra manpower and the stop in the flow of aid to the instructions will surely come in handy. What do you do with them after that, then? What, what is that? Oh, uh, that's not bad. Yeah, come up here. You know, we could use a manpower too. Ah, catch him the border. The set on all sides. Very nice. Japan doesn't exist. Zelta Russia. Gross. Grosser Zeltum Manshurai. Scavenging dice. I found Great Britain. Why are the Britain here? I really hate this over here, too. The Great Famine, of course. Welsh Kingmakers. Shadow of the Empire. Outnumbered. Hmm, interesting. Catch up the border. The Anglosphere. The Anglosphere. The Asian Defense Pact. Far East United Duchy. Oh, von Falkenhausen. But I'm not Hedrish. Oh! Huh. Interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, the Iberian Council. Well, all right. But set on all sides. <coughs> they came from behind the tree line, rushing down the hill like a river. The pouring raided mass to approach from the convoy till it was already too late. The Pelagi soldiers raised their rifles and circled around the wagon trains. As a deafening downpour mixed with a relentless cry of the Anitu attackers, the sound drummed in the ears of every Pelagi sentry as the hordes of warriors floated towards the compound from all sides. Some broke and ran, heading in the direction unknown to even them. Pelagi commanders began to shoot, shout for orders, but as the horde drew in at a firing distance, the Pelagi lines began to crumble. Troops ran for their lives, some dropping their guns and equipment, but the Anitu did not care. Ball after ball began to erupt from the mass of wars that had no reach to the convoy. Man fell blood soaked the grass, and the shouts of Pelagi commanders were silent at the tip of Anitu's spears. Small contingents of Anitu warriors broke off and began to hunt down the deserters, thrusting spears into their backs or sending them off to the ground with well placed rifle shots. Hundreds were slaughtered in minutes, only one Anitu died. The bodies were piled in the wagons and set alight. The cheering uh, warriors marveled at the convoy erupted into the flames, some wagons exploding silently, lighting up the dark valley with a brilliant glow. This convoy had been routed, but there was many left to handle. Pulag knows fear. They're surrounded. Every major stronghold of the rebels has been obliterated. Every ounce of influence they once held had been wiped out. Heretics have been her heralded, or herded into prisons, and those who resisted have been disposed of. Total destruction of the rebel movement is almost at hand, and soon all of Balangal will be part of the cult and strong will be brought north to the samurai and heretic traders themselves. She has given us the strength to overcome. Nice. Actually, the final blow. Um, cool. So 30 days. Act for 30 days. When we're removed, we finally get the final blow. So we're going to wait like 30 days to do that for 30 days, and then we'll be okay for 30 days or so. 
Um, the biggest thing we're just missing is map power. Just like probably 20,000 map power. Oh, no, only 14. Oh, that's a lot better than earlier, was it? Oh. oh. Okay, well, let's take a look here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, a few territories. Well, it's definitely a lot better for uh, resistance strength. Holy crap. Oh, my goodness. Let's give 96% student and sufficient garrison. Give more lo local non core manpower, resources, workshops. As it's, we're really dropping uh, resistance strength. 0.1 every day is not bad. It says we have high plus, but not really. Yeah, can't change that. Nice, more guns. I love guns. Astronomy, nice. Get more research speed. I'm not sure how much is really going to help out, but you know, whatever. We'll see. All right. Found a blow. Mount team watches the fire some regiments move through the town towards the church. The church was the last base of operations for the Balangawi rebels, and he was overseeing this operation personally. The fire storm reached the steps of the church and began throwing their torches, torches at his base, sending fire licking up our outer wooden walls. In minutes, coughing and screaming could be heard inside. The rebels would burn or they'd surrender. Exit the temple of sin now, and we'll spare you all, she added the commander. Do not surrender, and your bodies will become sinners along with your rebellion. You're the last of the movement. This is your final stand. Stand with your dignity and live to see another day. And the fire stormers raised the rifles to the door of the church, waiting for it to open. After what felt like hours of Valentine, it finally did. Several men and women began to shuffle off in the burning structure, coughing and wheezing, clutching children into their sides and holding them elderly on their shoulders. This isn't a rebel group, Valentine thought. They're their families. He watched as the fire stormers seized the rebels and lined them up on a single file in front of the church, purposefully separating the children from the parents. They're waiting for your signal. Dumagun whispered to Valentine, leaning over. Valentine shook his head. They're not rebels. They've been promised mercy. Do it, a voice said. Valentine could feel tears swelling in his eyes, but he knew he had no choice. She demanded this from him. He raised his hand. The fire swimmers aimed the rifles at the families. The children barely had any time to scream, which is a good thing. Hey, finally get a corn laguna. And remove Balangawi resistance movement. Well, I sort of passed by about 100%, though. Nice. 115%. Nice. Oh, look at this. She speaks to me. Awesome. I do enjoy this quite a bit. I like this a lot. Oh my Jesus! I mean, uh, the the goddess. I mean, holy G goddess. Holy fathers. No, that's a lot of manpower. We have the volunteers. We have lightning throwers. These guys have actually more strength. I don't understand. Actually, I kind of do. We've been really researching a lot more infantry equipment for the spears guys than anything else. But Bolingar's pacification being complete. The greatest obstacle to our subjugation of the Philippines has been destroyed. It's natural for the cult to turn its eyes northward, but a variable lies within the closest of the cult's ranks. A variable of unknown value whose potential effects not yet foreseen. That variable is Ophelia. She's the greatest gift to this world. A title of this world, Brown team. She's your soul, your essence, your life. Do not waste her. She is more invaluable than you can know. We'll make one because I know supplies are going to get really bad here, so. I'd just rather make larger divisions than more divisions. She's not her. Nice mask, dude. <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize. I have the like, I've had a lot of coughing going on, but. Uh, across the stormy sea. Uh, something stirred deep inside Valentine's gut as he peered out over the rippling water of the Manila Bay. Uh, across the water, he could see Batan, the original of the Balangawi government. Now in Pelagi hands, and now above its rocky shoreline, he could make out the looming darkness of storm clouds. She was put into Batan, Valentine thought the clouds hovered out there as a sign. He stepped down from the overlook and unfurled a map on his table, when whipped through the tent with an angry can doors of urging him to move without in haste. He studied the lines and curves of the old map, meticulously examining every point of interest, every jungle, clearing, every coast and town. Pudlog defies you. The unclean rot to the to our north perpetuate resistance to our enlightening. Dismantle them, drench them in rivers of blood, claw their eyes from their skulls and gift their vision and sacrifice to war. He demands, she demands it. Valentine looked glanced up at Ophelia, sitting on her stool, chatting with a soldier. A gleaming, a gleam shined from her eyes, but a Valentine, those eyes could cut to his soul. She reminded him of her, the one he had lost. Ophelia and the gods was all Valentine had, but who mattered more? On to pull up. She is all there is. Yeah, we definitely need to get a lot of things on research, so. We'll get there. We have a thousand monies for the core. We got 350 every month, holy crap. I'm feeling extra strong today now. Lots of money. Pacify it and burn them all. The prophets will know. Ooh. She is not her. Could there be no cause sweeter than that of uh, <clears throat> a righteous path? Retribution not only for yourself, but the whole world of mankind. The whole of mankind. Blood stains the altar, but washes away the dirt. Marble must not be clean, but it must be divine. What is more divine than her? Ophelia is not her. Ophelia is not her. The prophets will know, though. And they will know everything. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, please. Do we have this any change? So that... 
focus that gives us more weekly unity does not work. The goddess of kind, but Evelyn goddess. She wishes fire upon only those who deserve um, fire. Her winds sweep across the lands and must be swept out of uncleanliness. She has designated her lands as her altar, build her cities as her temples, and bless her people as her children. She demands of her children all that they can give. But she does not demand more. She would not she would not blow this off from her head. She demands only what she must. When will it become clear? That's a good question. Alright. Prophet will know. She would never demand anything of us so vile, but thought express. It's not her will. We are, are her custodians, not her butchers. But butchery is our calling, Lord Dumagam. Without it, where would it be the family today? Toiling under the orders of a false god and his false servants, butchery has brought us to her. Both all let us a sigh, yes. But what do you describe as necessary? What the great prophet has just told us is not. How could such an event, if she demands it, we can't question her will? How do you know it is her will? What else could it be? Valentine closed his eyes and listened to the bickering of the prophets. He remained cool, but inside his head began to swirl. Thoughts came and went, fleeting images of material lives, sounds and voices rang. His head looked, or became a theater for all the perverse and bloodthirsty desires he had locked in the back of his consciousness. He heard the crack of fire and the roar of gunshots. The screams echo blood pour, but throughout his trance, the figure remained as clear as a cloudless day, swaying before him in the moonlight, glistening in the sun, singing with the voice of angels and growling, or growling with a ferocity that leviathan. But still, who was his figure? Valentine could tell. Ooh, the storm goddess, I don't know. Maybe they're one and the same. I don't know. What will become clear? Dan Dan Soy. Dan Dan Soy, I'd like to leave you. Uh, I'm going back home to Payo. Payao. Though, if, if, we, if you yearn for me, just look towards Payao. Dan Dan Soy, if you follow me, don't bring even water. Though, if you get thirsty, dig a well along the way. Charged with falling in love. The coming of the black ships. Uh-oh. Brandon had been a tourist from America when the dark month came to the Philippines. From across the Pacific, he'd sailed through the churning waters aboard a steamer of unfathomable power. The advent... Uh, of Tanzanium. I created a connected world that many could not have envisioned ten years prior, but soon after Stahl had landed in Manila, you never imagined this archipelago would be his final grave. He stood alone, looking out over the Pacific, as he usually did this time of day, the sun ablaze overhead, cutting through the dark clouds brewing on the horizon. The kamikaze season was almost upon his home once again. The weather of the Philippines was, oddly, one of the things he liked more than America. Sometimes he missed his home. Sometimes he stared over the churning waters and dreamt of a return. Was his family still alive? Had they skipped the horrors of the dark month? And did they, and did they wonder if the same about him? His thoughts began to wander when suddenly from over the horizon emerges a ship. A shape like he'd never seen before. It was a twisted combination of monster and ship towering above the waters as it sped towards its resting place. More began to emerge and more. Brandon had watched as his shapes became clear, their sails more visible, the floating flags on their masts signing their uh, origin. It was a flag he'd never seen before, but he flew over to Mata. Uh-oh. Brandon began to turn to warn his village of a danger that he didn't quite understand, the nature of, when a blast rang out from behind him. A Tanzanian shell ripped its way through the air, crashing into the hillside behind him, sending him cascading to a nearby bush. He barely had time to stand, before more shells rose from the armada of black ships stretching into the sky like a hungry leviathan, ready to crash upon the earth with a fury he could only imagine God to possess. The fire began to rain down from the coastline. Houses beneath Brandon's overlook were sent ablaze. As the first of black ships came ashore, so too did the crews. Thousands of wars began to disembark upon the sand, firing volleys into fleeing villagers and slashing down any who tried to oppose them. War drums began to thunder, almost drowning out the sound of the torrential downpour fire battering the land. An invasion begun, and the black ships from across the sea had arrived. Fury besets the Philippines. Oh, crap. Duke William and uh, a ship crossed the sea and came to Pavensi. Oh. Leave a God's retaliation. <coughs> Rush to prepare. Onslaught of the evil god. Uh oh. Well, that's not good. Still got a lot of money, though. The first holy war. The evil god has come. The fall of his minions of Balan God and righteous cleansing of his servants has angered him beyond measure. But he's not angry, he fears her might. He sees a great army spreading across the zone like a torrential rain, battering all who resist us beneath our onslaught. And he fears the day we arrive at the samurai's gates, pounding with the force of thunder. The invaders from the east cross the great sea at the behest of the evil god. They've come to extinguish the flame of the goddess and grind her mission to dust. But I say let them come. Let the sheep teeter clumsily into the jaws of the wolf. They will drive north and they'll find themselves trapped in the eyes of the hurricane. The first holy war has arrived. It is not just a fight for her, but a fight for our survival. And though, through her grace, we will drive the demons back to the, into the sea. Valentine slammed the podium with his fist and rose his face to the cloudy sky, offering prayer to the goddess. The crowd began to cheer in a massive voices that filled the skies with tumultuous excitement. The evil god was on his way, and in a matter of weeks he would be at the border ready to pounce. The people of the cult feared no, fe felt no fear. For the news, she watched over them, and she would batter their foes at us. Let them face the winds. <clears throat> well, we'll see. Burdens on um, ceremonies. 
Being between Kamikaze Caesars would not give debuffs. Oh. Appear that I need to. Uh, a to fight against the evil god is Oh god. I feel this is very difficult. Um, you know what, just in case. We'll see, I don't know. Oh, oh. First of war is approaching, approaching, and preparations must be made if we are to withstand the onslaught of the God's evil forces. Declare war on us. Oh, they just set up Annex. Declares war on storm children. Annex is Filipino wastelanders. Oh. Heretics. Decreased by a large amount. Oh, we removed two civvies, but you get two millies. Seize the wealth of heretics, rapidly drill regiments. It's not bad either to do. I'm actually doing that right now. I don't be bad. We might be able to get to the next. Uh, oh, 30 days. Land doctrine? Might want to get more entrenchment, maybe. Probably go severe firepower? Oh, wow. This is different, different, definitely different than it was before. Plus 2% more breakthrough. Wow. Um. More population, it's not bad. Minus 20% supply consumption. Minus 35% supply consumption overall is very strong. Less speed, more speed. Honestly, close to March order. Trench warfare is better. Because you get so much more defense if you need it. So, I think. Eh, that's not bad too. 5% is not great. 25% more land out attacks, not bad either. Uh, experience game is okay. Mobile warfare, there's really no point to do that too much. Unless you have like a lot of cab, and we don't have that. Um, yeah. Resistance growth speed is not bad either. So, yeah, we'll go with Super Firepower. Oh. It's hard to tell exactly where their uh, divisions begin and ours lie. Oh, crap. Does that mean they're connected up there? Uh, I need to come to our aid. The need two wars, once our friends against the Pelagi have once again proven their loyalty as we face the same threat. They have agreed to send troops to our aid when the evil god's minion comes, as long as we give equal support to them once the conflict with the Pelagi arises. Great puppets. Well, crap. Another general... There. <clears throat> Excuse me. Four days left. After this one, uh, protect our backs. Yeah, that'd be good. Or pressure on Pulag. Okay, so we got more army XP now, which is good. And then... Three infrastructure is not bad. Ooh, more loyalty and unity. That'd be pretty good to get, too. Could use more divisions, in all honesty. Yeah, I want more divisions. Just in case, because we, we definitely do not have enough. These guys are going to get hit hard. These guys are going to get hit hard. These guys are going to definitely get hit very hard. The coffee's pretty good, though. Uh, turn that sucks. Protect our backs. Might as well. And then... Uh, offensive Firestormers. Okay, Resistance, Recovery, Attack, Breakthrough. Not bad. And we got enough equipment here anyways. Body armor is still a big issue for us, but whatever. We'll work on that. We're working on it. One steel, huh? Hey! Nice. Very good. Emergency brigades. Oh, they're not that great. We have enough manpower and equipment. We can do that. Well, except for body armor, but whatever. So now they're 100% still. Oh, 80. oh, it's 85%. Okay, it's fine. Whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hmm. Search islands just in case. So, hopefully, we just keep doing this until we're fully ready to go. So, we'll see what happens. Well, everyone, here we're at. It's now August 17th, 1943. This is taking me forever with this Polynesian War because all the resistance the AI cannot handle. Um, but, yeah, we've done this without cheats, out without cons commands. Um, but, yeah, that's not very uh, great. The resistance thing is god-awful. And someone did say supplies are pretty bad, but at the same time, um, it's not great.
Um, yeah, they're suffering greatly. We're suffering greatly, as you can tell. We're out of a crap ton of stuff here, too. We're out of manpower. Just not a good experience overall. I mean, I, I know it would be really god-awful fighting down here, but still, like... Holy crap. Jesus Christ, this is not good. Can you just force the attack? I mean, at this point, they, they shouldn't be able to do anything against us. I mean, look at that. They have literally no strength. And they're, they're able to resist us? It literally makes no sense. So, if I had a complaint, um, it would be to, like, redo this war. Definitely do redo this war. At least, uh, the AI be able to put down resistance, maybe? That's the biggest issue I have right now. It's not supply. Because we actually, we were able to get this. Um, here, build something right there. It'll take, it'll take a while, December 22nd, so. Um, but yeah, they're able to resist us, which makes literally no sense right now. I mean, yes, it's still jungle, but, you know, still. With literally no strength. Does that make sense to me? No, not really. Oh, so Division's up there, too. Which, in all honesty, probably best to keep them up there, but, you know, whatever. There you go. At this point, damage should be down here. Extra supplies. I mean, just, it's just, we only have resistance because of the stupid state. So trying to lower resistance is the biggest thing. I even got an intelligence agency to help lower our resistance down here. Um, up down here. That's what actually go down anyways. And for this one, um, Cebu. Technically, we do not have the uprising, which is really bad. We do have it in Mindao, so that's below 80%. So we're getting there. It's going to take a lot of time, though, which sucks. So, the AI. I don't understand why the AI just cannot handle this at all. And like I saw earlier, there's this... Oh my god, it's so bad. It's, this is just so bad. Logistics Wizard, I mean... Oh, also, the Field Marshal has been reduced. Um, field Marshal traits really wouldn't give us any benefits if we did nothing there, so... Yeah, we've just been sitting here. I mean, it's not very good. I want to do a general attack, but we can't afford it. It's all due to resistance, and it's not our fault either. So I've literally just been, like I said, sitting here, doing nothing. Just just waiting, just waiting, waiting, waiting. And we finally did it. My gosh, it took forever. And then these guys were re-released for some reason. Um, Not cool, but we have this. We go to war with Pulag, Polynesian peoples, and I need to warriors. We get the unexpected war. <sighs> well, all right. Um, the spectacle. All right. Well, we're back at war. We built up a lot of naval bases, as you can see around here and there. Um, still building up more naval bases because we can. Um, so yeah. Let's see what happens. Hopefully, we don't do terribly. Then again, we haven't that much supply anywhere doing anything. But you know, you never know. All right. Is that it for them? No. Oh, they're down here. Kind of ridiculous, not gonna lie, trying to do all this stuff. But you know what, this mod's on development, so I can't really fault the devs too much. Just enough. Like normal. Alright, so now, pull up everybody up here so we can focus on these guys and hopefully be able to just beat the crap out of them. Because their soldiers are pretty good, as long as they're fully supplied and whatnot. I um, mean, look at the depths that we have. Massive, massive depths that we actually need more. We actually need quite a bit more steel, which does suck too, but whatever. Spectacle is bypassed. Huh. Tear up the mercenaries. Quick conclusion. Daily influence. Oh, God. Claiming our conquest again. I can't tell what this one is. Uh, non core manpower. Damage of garrisons goes down by 30%. That's actually really good. Uh, tear up the mercenaries, maybe. 40%. Oh. Just auto completes. Okay. Ending the rebellion. Totality order. Break them in the caches. Yeah, we could really use that. Uh, demand faith. Prototypes. Ensure continuity. Or the breakdown. Followed up with peace at last. All immediate effects from this war. Oh, I guess technically the war is over. Betrayal will not be tolerated. As soon as begins the war. As soon as the war against the Polynesians managed to end, it started all over again. Deals being broken off with the Anito and their own sense of opportunism with Philip. The Anito to believe that they are capable of upending all order in the Philippines and having gaining control for themselves. Well, all right, we got a political power port now, so whatever. And then see us all alone. All right, well, we'll see. My God, with this, oh boy, oh man, there goes all of our, our divisions again, our manpower. 
So that's not terrible. We will need some supply up here, though, so let's go and build some up there. Yeah, we could use more... Oh, we got some more steel. That's nice. We don't have any convoys, which sucks. Um... We get one, but that's not worth it. But gather and do it, a voice whispered to Valentine. As we escorted the pedestal, dense rows of zealots on paying no attention to the wild, howling damp, or all must be clean. My Trojan Valentine began, trying to hide the terror that crippled every muscle in his body as the paladins dragged this kicking bit, dragged daughter onto the slab. Manila has fallen, her paradise is almost at hand. Every heretic rooted, every stronghold raised, as... <clears throat> Has all been for it. He forced himself not to wince as one of the masked zealots slapped Ophelia across the face as her arms and legs were being tied down. There remains only one impurity in the way. Every word was agony to make out at this point. My own daughter, a vessel for the devil, so corrupt. We have offered mercy, but her deceit will no longer be tolerated. <coughs> May my sections, actions, today serve as a reminder of my dedication to her word. One of the figures, he wasn't too sure who at this point, passed him a jag dagger in my absolute dedication to all of you. It'll hurt less than on the other side, he tried to tell himself. Thousands of adoring eyes on him. The prophet raised a dagger higher with a squirming, trying tribute. Crying tribute. One last time, his gaze caught hers. He, her eyes had always been just like her mother's. Today, they were filled with those the same t same tears too. Blood must flow. She demands it. Oh, she died. And that's why you never get too close to anything. Oh man. Uh, firearms, very cool. All right, and then uh, digesting conquest. All right, we'll see what happens. Keep doing this stuff too. Cool. And then, uh, the vault mocks us on the brink of victory. Well, I mean, in all honesty, we're doing really well. We have one, two, three, four territories. We only need three more. So, I think we're doing okay. I could be very wrong. Oh, wow, look at that. We have enough body armor now. We have to try to get some more support convoys, too. Oh, finally, we can have artillery. So, all the stuff we did before probably was for nothing. Oh, crap. Huh. That's not good. I'd love to have a little more artillery. All right, nothing there. So as you can tell, like I said, this is still in development, so. Also, we have no ideas here. Uh, brigades, we might have to go up a little even higher maybe eventually, but let's see, artillery. Overall, not bad. And we've done really really well as best we can. What's control like here? Strong grip, we have a strong grip, not bad. Uh, Firestorm Regiment, so it's actually very nice to have. Indoctrination Villages, of course. We have Embrace the Storm, as well as Untamed Luzon, which sucks. I hate this one so much. But the vault mocks us. Like the vault from, like, Borderlands or something? <coughs> Alright, cst.151.d. And then work out a plan. Well, we'll see. Um, let's see, work out a plan. I doubt any of these would really fire anything. It's maybe a wise choice, but for us to buy time, we need to fight Vault's influence even more. Increase recruitment by the vault's influence even more. Two more, are you kidding me? Only two more artillery? Bro. Reinforce the militia. All right. Advance intel. And strengthen the output, which might not be too bad either. And now, everyone, we're at one great blow. Once you go to war with the Uchu, Chikyu, and Umi. I guess we had to do this one, and which blocked all these other stuff, which is eh, kind of unfortunate, but we didn't get to all that. But I didn't know. Just go and kill them all, please. Please. I just want to kill all the enemies at this point. I just want to destroy them all. What does this even do? Extra supplies. It doesn't really help us out that much, but go, go ahead. Oh! They died. Doesn't matter. Um, our greatest struggle. Are we are, are we struggling here? I don't know about that. I mean, we're doing really well. We've got 12 divisions. About the same amount as the, both these enemies combined, and they're still fighting each other, so I'm not really too worried about that. We do have a good amount of artillery. I did throw on artillery divisions on the Kamikaze, so they even have more attacks, which is great, so... Yeah, not bad overall. 37 versus 1,000 versus 13,000? Jesus. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really too concerned about how we're performing. I mean, overall, it's just kind of like, uh, just push this direction. Especially after fighting the god dang Polynesians, that was terrible. But, you know... I think it's more of a, not a dev thing, it's more of like a paradox thing. Vault? Sure. Disperse industry? Sure. Construction speed? Sure. And we basically won! Yay! Yay! To die? To die? Today. Well, this all got done. Did Jenner's no more? Question mark. Cool. Oh! What the heck? What? What the crap is this? 
They pulled a reverse sneaky on us. What the heck? Bro. Bro. What you doing, son? Why'd you reverse sneaky us? I mean, 1v1, they won't be able to defeat us. Oh, that was getting kind of close there. How did you just reappear, Uchu? Bruh. Not cool. Ah, see, fast fight, fast fight. The generacy must be wiped out. And a conclusion. Delete improved. Oh, redemption of brigades. I also got these ones just to make convoys so we can trade to get more steel. So. Yeah, and there we go. You guys are all done. We got a strong grip, and I like it when they've got a strong grip. Oh, uh, look at them all go. I don't think we have cores on any of this territory yet. Could be very wrong about that, though. Do we have cores? Yeah, we don't have cores on these territories. This is literally all just, like, resistance spots, which sucks. We don't have any of those brigades. Don't even need that. Fire arms, nice. Conclusion? Oh. And there's another focus tree. Well, um, let's see, what is this? Cartography? Begin mapping the vault and figuring out all his dirty secrets? Well, at this point, I think we're pretty, we passed by the area pretty darn well. Um, so there's things worth the content, so. I don't know, I've been going at this for quite a while, like over probably an hour and a half. So, I'm not too, too worried about this, but we can also put you guys over here to help low resistance as well. That'll probably help out quite a bit. Cartography. Alright, the facilities. Point nine. Help and lower all the resistance right now. Hmm. 56%. That's pretty good over there. 6%. Could be getting better. 57 Filipino Wastelanders. Yeah. Oh, resistance is already falling down there, which is very nice. I need two warriors. Dropping already. That's very good. Very good. Yeah, we got plenty of stuff now. Even artillery's not bad. Light throwers. Oh, holy crap. Lightning throwers. That's way better. Holy crap. Um, let's go with A. I like A. The A? Uh, main hall? Let's go with A. And A again. We lost two maps. God dang. What the heck? Yeah, screw that. Screw the melee stuff. That's really good. And in terms of technology, we only got... Oh, well, I guess we have to get the battle rifle. That's no wonder it's better. Because these guys, Tanzanium Spears, soft stack is 2.5. Well, the soft stack for battle rifles is 10. That's way better. <clears throat> Hate to come with... Um, these guys actually have less heart attack, but... Let's go with A again. Oh, we keep losing manpower. God dang it. Corridors? Whoa. <clears throat> Screw that melee equipment, man. Yeah, so less heart attack, which is fine. Uh, piercing wise, you guys actually have less piercing. Same organization, same HP. That soft stack is just brutal. It's so brutal that I'm just going to convert them all to this. Just all become lightning throwers at this point. You might as well. Volunteer divisions, you can do the garrison stuff. Corridors, Japanese trickery, A. Okay, A is the exact wrong answer, apparently. And now we can trade with Spain. Oh, but another 2 out of 6, dang it. Uh, I can trade with you. Not bad. Share the wealth, why not? Spread the wealth around. We don't need nearly as many poison spears now. They find a few firearms. Tanzanium. How's oh, a grip? Uh, let's do this first. Seal exits. Direct effect of vault demolition. Carve out emergency exits. Uh, sure. Why not? Still strong grip. Uh, on Tim Luzon, when we have them all. 60% is already pretty good. 25% is not as good. You know, whatever. It is what it is. Kamikaze season still going on. But yeah, I'm very impressed with how much soft attack these guys got. Oh, that's that's insane. Uh, 46 breakthrough. These guys had what? 32. 78 defense, but this guy's way more defense. Lightning throws are really good. More extraction. Needs more steel. Inside and out. It's a conquer, and we love conquering. Um, few territories. 32%. Um, 14% overall not bad. 60% down there is pretty good. 
Cebu. Yeah. 33, 33, 14. It's just going to take some time. That's all it is. Scavenging. Um, keep building up some civvies. Or we can do some anti partisan stuff. Might as well at this point, right? Right. Alright, and then I guess we'll do secrecy. It begins concealing the operations of the vault to keep prying eyes away. Why not? He's motorized. Here. This probably could have helped earlier. Especially for all the terrain stuff. But whatever. Oh, good. Amphibious river crossings. Oh, my goodness. Naval facilities. Cool. Keep working on all this stuff, too. It's fine. Train two if you need it. I won't even make any more divisions, anyways. Rook. Nice. And uh, the dark spot. Hey, can you, you think you can tell me something? Nope. No resistance, please. This is sucking up a lot of political power, though, but that's okay. What else are we going to do with it? Make it unfeasible. Angelo sighed. His junior guard mate was getting to be a pain in the butt. Asked too many questions. Was too jumpy. Took the job maybe a little too seriously. Took another drag of a cigarette before answering. What do you want, Piolo? This map, uh, Piolo had up the small map of the storm children guards that were given when on patrol and flipped it around so Angelo could see. Later in the middle, he pointed to it with his finger. I know I probably shouldn't ask what a forbidden zone is. It has in it, but I mean, what do you what do you happen to know? The juniors always asked this question without fail. The human desire to gather knowledge and answer questions was strong, and of course, not even the formidable storm children were immune to certain human desires. Nearing the end of his smoke, Angelo removed the rapidly shortening cigarette from his mouth and threw it on the forest ground or stamped it to prevent a forest fire. Now, so none of this is 100% certain, but the vast majority of the guards are 99% sure that the, the Forbidden Zone is actually the vault. Piolo looked uncertain for a moment, and Angelo decided to humor him. The vault, you know, Tanzanium, that Piolo understood, and his eyes went slightly wisely per pursed his lips. Understandably, our superiors wouldn't want anyone sticking their noses into it, so they decided that the whole area was off limits just for peace of mind. Don't visit it. The rest of the patrol saw it, which Angelo savored. 70% is pretty good already. It's not bad. We should we do more with stuff with money? Like an unfeasible. Nice. Phase out the rhetoric. And demolition. The jungle was awash with humidity and Gasper wipes his sweat off his brow as he diligently installs a pointed tip to a pointed tip, one after the other, observed tersely by his aides. Their eyes follow his movements, tracking the shovel he takes to a soft patch to soil that his shoes where the needle clusters are lodged and then hid him from sight by shrubbery. The consternation was understandable. Despite the near indistinguishable markers being placed in the trap sites, a careless mistake would be met with extremely painful punishment. And the Emerald Heck, with a little med medical attention at hand, who's to say he didn't live? Good with ex excrement, poison, rusted tips, or otherwise anything that could infect or in venom. These last nasty little things might impale the whole foot wholesale of an unlucky soul. This gate had a little force behind him. Gasper can't help but chuckle at the idea I had a bit of sadist at heart. That he might have been put in charge of the task for that exact reason never crossed his mind. As far as he understood it, these buggers would prevent unwanted pedestrian traffic in the depths of the rainforest. His supervisors were making a concerted effort to secure the vault outskirts, and once the first few poor dudes turned up dead with an amputated leg, the rest might learn to stay on the footpaths, right where the children could exert their control over them. Gasper took a step back to inspect his handiwork provingly. He almost wishes he could see the face of the first victim, but a useful one. CST demolition. So the men which we rid ourselves of the vault. Oh, the arms work out nice. Are we done building? Oh no, military factories. Okay. Well, let's go with that then. Shot on sight. Incredible idea. A done deal question mark. You and me? An injury, huh? <clears throat> Is that the manner in which we rid ourselves of the vault, hey? Kinda sounds like the Borderlands vault. The vault takes a back seat, the unity goes up, which is nice. Making do? Sure, why not? Direct the blow, study the vault. Oh, get a research slot! Oh, oh I did want one. Connections, which trust them. The journey leads to money. Set up the bombs. Well, alright then. For one a day is not bad. 
we're nearing our journey of pacifying, especially the Anita Warrior and Pelagi territory, which is good, we can do. Study the vault. We get a whole flippin' research slot for just studying the vault. Wow. It's kind of insane. Alright, so resistance is pretty good. Compliance is actually pretty darn decent as well. 6% is not great. 73 is obviously better. Yeah. Boy, is it not going up very fast, is it? No, it ain't. Cool. You and me. I'll take it on the research slot. I gladly will. Paved roads. Yeah, roads are pretty good to get. <coughs> Turn empty handed, unfortunately. Um, excavation. More excavation. Ooh, I actually have a positive amount now. Great. Direct the blow. Add directing the blow. We got a lot more research speed. Not bad. The injury. Angel limped home slowly, being supported through the crutch he was given by his boss. He had gotten his ankle sprained, and his boss deemed him unfit to work for the vault until he had recovered at home. Uh, it was nothing but of, of bit of rest and recuperation didn't fix, but couldn't fix. But Angel still dreaded returning to his village. He knew by now that some kind of reputation in the vault outside the bubble of the storm children and his locals spoke in hushed tones about it and spoke as if it were some kind of demon, the belly of the beast, as it were. Just as he expected, the day returned home was not a joyful one. His family brought him food, fixed up his ankle, but they never really talked to him. In fact, he avoided it was avoided, not only by those around him, but the, by the rest of the village on a few occasions he went outside. The only ones that did not uh, were the ones who had been in the same boat as him, locals who had been recruited to work in the vault, and had been sent home for one reason or another. These were the only men he could talk to, and the only ones that really understood, and he found them to be good conversationalists, kind of conversationalists as uh, they complained about working conditions of pay. One small sprain for man. And I guess we're going to blow up the vault. Direct the blow. Get an extra 20% uh, construction speed, aim, or research speed, I mean, is not bad. But man, our unity kind of sucks. Oh, they turned empty hand, that sucks, bro. Alright, so they're 90%, which is very good. And now we're out, so we're gonna get this to 100% first, and then we'll finish these guys off, too. Luckily, the mod moves pretty darn quickly. Can we just pay people to like us? Does that work? Can that work? We got air bases too, look at that. 6% nice. Probably close out of these ones, we don't really see them anymore. So if you get them to 100%, you should be able to core them. I think that would be fair. To a degree. Uh, shot on sight. Steel smelting, huh? Steel mills? Sure, why not? You know, you might as well just train from here on out. Might as well. Surefire way, political loyalty, base unity. We could use more unity, why not? <coughs> Scavengers go missing, of course. Oh well, that's a needed sacrifice for the glory of our uh, nation. Don't know why we need forts there, but whatever. Yeah. Strong grip still, huh? That's all we get, it's just a strong grip. That's all we get, ever. 44%, 67%, Mon. The fast way. A done deal, question mark. Now we're just building a crap ton of forts. If anything, actually, supply is probably better to do. There you go. There you go. It's alright. I did like that we were able to change our laws in government, though. Go to training, go to military like empire, um, go to mobilization. Aggressive reconstruction would be pretty bad to do. It's just not worth it. I mean, I like construction speed, but <clears throat> everything else would not have been worth it. An incredible idea. What can you piece? As of today, there have been 80, 56 separate incidents on the outer perimeter being breached, with about 80% of intruders being fatalities of the vault. We should prioritize security measures going in and out of the vault as we, as well as Christ. It was all too much sometimes. Commander ba Batabor took a swig out of his flask as a logistics secretary kept joining on. All his crap he had to deal with just kept coming ba coming and coming, and sometimes the darn things overlapped. He was thinking about all this when the secretary managed to catch his attention again. We're currently looking at all available options for the disposal of these bodies, but we haven't found a suitable 
Wanted to throw him in the vault, Batabor asked casually. A secretary paused, or pardon sir, another swig, just so the bodies are in the vault somewhere where they won't be seen. We're blowing the whole thing up soon anyway, so as might as well kill two birds with one stone and turn them into ash. No bodies, no problem. The secretary looks slightly incredulous, but quickly regained composure. I, uh, I'll inform the higher-ups of your deal. Good. That's a good one. Walking out, the woman wondered. The surefire way. Which hand translates to the following effects. Resistance target goes down by 15%. That's not bad. 0.7. It's still not going down very quickly, though. Compliance does help, though. State victory points hurts it, though. Working in peace. Normally, in any other context, this wouldn't have been anything notable, of course, but, or special, or worth devoting any brain power to, but here in the Philippines, near the vault with the storm children and bandits constantly at each other's throats, basically everybody. <clears throat> And the era couldn't remember the last time a gunshot had been fired somewhere by someone. And yet here it was. The day had come when the only sound in the era were the sounds of trucks, laborers, and patrolling guards. For once, a storm children were allowed to simply work in and around the vault and explore its many facets and intricacies. There was no outside throat, no ambushes, no nothing. Uh, some took some notice in small health celebrations as alcohol was open and cigarettes were lit and, and made what merry they could under the conditions. Others spent the whole day paranoid, constantly looking behind their backs as they went through the day with their paranoia only increasing. But the vast majority simply quietly relaxed and uh, enjoyed the peace, putting their feet up when they could and just generally take it easier that day. This opportunity was almost unthinkable after all, and God knows when it would come around again, so the men knew when to savor every last moment of it, knowing that peace would be up, could be uprooted at any moment. The vault's influence dwindles. On the cheap way. We have another focus tree after this? Holy crap. That's kind of insane. Let's get through this focus stream and maybe call it an episode, and then next episode will probably end the campaign. I don't know, because half this is not even finished yet, so. We'll see. And we'll do it the safe way. The foreman's letter. God, we can use more political power. 55% pacification is not good enough for me. Yeah, I'm pretty much done with scavenging. We don't really need to do that anymore. I mean, 500 is a bunch of cavalry equipment, too, huh? Soft attack. No hardness. Interesting. Oh, the correct way. The safe way. Oh. Well, I guess we can't do that one. Set up the bombs? Well, that you can never do the safe way because of you need both these and you can't do that one. So, alright. Yeah. So the bombs. Working it out. Working in peace. Oh, inside and out. So we can do these two, and do the safe way, you do it there. But we gotta do the correct way. And I guess CST, time to go! Paved roads, hey! Roads are nice. Here, build a corrupt on the roads. Time to go! Kablooey. 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 Unburied his mask, protected necklace, and glistening bandoliers, usually made in the scariest thing in the room, yet even Pedro shuddered at his peacekeeping squad into the vault mine. Blood trickled down the walls, down the lamps, and now showing an eerie red light. Five meters in, his compatriot tripped over what turned out to be immediately to remain to the foreman. A pickaxe lodged in his neck. Oh, crap. Agreeing to put down any survivors past that point, the men headed deeper down the cave. Each turn revealed more mutilated bodies, each room another seat of horror, all shell casings on the ground, and bizarre scribblings on the walls, as if a steam train bulldozed through the cavern, trampling the entire excavation, crude its crimson pegs. The higher ups instructed them to force, first and foremost, defend the vault itself. It even hardened paladins shuddered as they entered the found chamber. Before the great door, a slab far too big to be located this deep in the underground. Blood and sulfur and some foul, foreign smell mixed in the air, emanating from the bodies of workers arranged in an elaborate circle in the center of the room. The last survivor known to pool of blood and cave water, chewing on well, Pedro imagined it was one someone's hand. As coming through the mad prisoner's voice rang out like a nursery rhyme, we cracked it, we cracked it wide open, they'll show us show themselves to us. <clears throat> in the name of the storm prophet, stand down or we will. They're not happy with us. We what we did with the gifts, red saliva oozed from the soul surviving miners grim. They're coming to take back what's theirs. Uh, against everything, Pedro's mind kept trying to identify the other substance, this mysterious foul order that hung in the air, something mechanical, something foreign, something he remembered from his childhood from when cars were commonplace. Before we could scream out in order, his compatriot pulled the trigger, and heck it came undone. Why did we only get two research slots, bro? Bad news from the Philippines. If you want to know about that, please go ahead. Can't be good for the locals. Oh. Whoa. <coughs> Whoa. 
Whoa. Whoa. Well, you know what? I think we'll save this for the next episode, which probably might not be too long. I, I can tell you, so. Um, but, hey, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see what the rest of this mod has for the Philippines. Thanks for watching. Have a great Valentin de los Santos the rest of your day.